Okay, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Welcome back for a virtual, another virtual science camp. I'm really excited about this one today. We've got uh, Fabien, who I met in, uh, in December at CERN School Lab. Uh, there might be one or two of you with us who were with me on that trip uh, presenting on the, the co-ed project, what we were doing in Ghana uh, with a teacher I had also met at CERN. Um, and I'll let uh, Fa Fabian introduce himself a little bit more, uh, but it's really quite a pleasure to have him along for this one. And I'm excited for these smartphone hologram reflectors that we're going, uh, we're going to be going over. Uh, so thank you again for joining us and welcome. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for, for having me. Um, I'm also very excited to, to join the session on, uh, on hologram reflectors. And uh, yeah, as you said, we, we met at CERN, uh, so let me briefly introduce myself and what I'm doing when I'm not building uh, hologram reflectors. So um, uh, I spent a lot of time in, in Berlin, actually, uh, working, studying there. Um, but recently, I've moved to, to CERN, and uh, I joined the education team at CERN to build uh, low-cost, high-tech, low-cost experiments um, and to do educational outreach of that sort. Um, but what I would like to, to show you today is not really related to CERN, uh, nor is it related to the work I do at CERN, but um, I'm also a physicist and a, as a, a physics teacher, and I, I really do love experiments, so I, I just saw I, I would like to, to share this experiment, which I like very much, and I find uh, fast to build and impressive, and also the physics behind it is, uh, is, is beautiful. So, um, yes, I would propose that we jump right into it if you're okay with that um, and i would propose a three-step approach so first uh, i'm going to show you how to to build it to build this hologram deflector and and after that we're actually going to do it i have my materials prepared and i, I do hope that you're ready as well uh, and then we're gonna observe it and finally discuss a little bit uh, about the physics that's that's going on there so um i hope everybody's on board and uh, we're ready to go I interpret uh, that as a yes. <laughs> okay. And, and can we can we can we get everyone either to give a thumbs up or to hold up materials if you have materials ready to to follow along with this at home? Okay, I, I do see oh. uh, thumbs up. So yeah. right, here's mine. Let's go. <laughs> okay, perfect. So let's so, go. Uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. I prepared a little presentation um, so you can, which makes it easier probably to to follow along. So I'm gonna share that right now. And uh, can you see that, everybody? Thumbs up if you're good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's uh, jump right into it. Um, so what's what's going to happen? I do hope you printed out this template uh, either on a transparent film or on a piece of paper, because we're gonna need that later on. And what we're gonna do is, um, first we'll actually cut it out. So if you printed it on film, you actually can just cut out all the individual parts and you're, you're good to go. If you haven't, because you weren't able to get any print transparent printing film as I wasn't able to get it during those uh, trouble times, um, then we're gonna just cut it out on paper so we have actually the, the form available as a template. And in and, and the second step, we're gonna cut a rectangular uh, um, piece of film a little bit larger than what the template uh, is. And the next step is gonna be that we actually put the transparent film on the paper and we, we're gonna cut out the outlines of, of this shape. Uh, and afterwards, we're gonna cut each individual, individual piece. And what we should end up with is actually four pieces of transparent film, which, uh, which look like this. Okay, so that's what, what we are trying to, um, trying to achieve. So to, uh, to sum it up very quickly, first cut out the paper template, and secondly, cut out a piece of, of transparent film, then uh, place the transparent film on, on the paper template and finally cut it all out. So any questions so far? No, you're fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, yes. Um, so, when I've got it like this, do I cut out the individual parts? Yes, you do. So that's, okay. that's our ultimate goal to have those individual parts actually. But it's okay. easier if you have it like the, um, the paper and the transparent film separately, then it's easier to cut out the outlines first mm -hmm. um, and then cut the individual parts because otherwise it's a little bit tricky to, to actually uh, hold it in place. 
but uh, the idea is to have uh, individual parts. And our zoom is kind of minimized and I will see how I can <laughs> maximize it again. And, and also if anyone else has any questions about their materials, like if you found something that wasn't what we might have expected you'd find, but you might, you think it might work, feel free to ask or check details on that now while everyone's taking a minute to cut theirs out. All right, so let's just go. I'm gonna switch the camera. Um, so I've got my materials prepared here. On your template, you find two different um, sizes depending on whether you're gonna use a, a tablet or a smartphone later on. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a tablet actually, so I'll cut out the larger one. So let's first cut out the, uh, the paper template. Okay, so you should get a paper template such as this one. Well, and now I'm gonna continue by just cutting a transparent piece of film, which is a little bit larger than this, um, than this template. Let me have a quick look, don't screw it up. Okay, now I have a transparent piece of film, which is just a little bit larger than, uh, than the actual template. And I'm gonna put it on top of the template and um, cut out the outlines of the template on the transparent film. And, and I'd say that, that the trick is here to really hold it tightly because otherwise it's, it's gonna move and later on it's not gonna fit really anymore. So. Okay, so um, now I have a piece of transparent film and it matches the outline of the templates. How are you? Is that, uh, are you ready or still working? So if, if you finish cutting yours up, give a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Uh, I had one myself that was printed off of um, uh, like transparent paper that I actually did before the confinement. And I'm still working on another one, so it's slow to do too, but I think I saw a bunch of thumbs up. If anyone needs more time, let us know now, so we'll hold on a minute before we rush on to the next part. All right, everybody seems to be ready. So um, yeah, let's just move on. And as I explained, we should now cut out the individual parts. So I'll just you know, cut along the, those dotted lines and uh, I'm gonna end up with, with four individual pieces.
Oh, and just so we can make your screen bigger, do you mind if I stop your screen sharing so like people can see better what's on your camera? No, sure, go ahead. So I am just going to get rid of the paper parts, which I won't need anymore. They were just um, for me that helped to cut out the pieces in the right dimension. And now I have four uh, individual parts, which look like this. And if you do too, then uh, we are ready to, to move on. Okay, everybody done? Okay, it looks like most people are done. If you're not done, again, let us know if you want us to hold up for more time. Uh, I see thumbs up. So I'd say that we move on. So now I'm gonna um, restart the screen sharing because I, I prepare um, how we're gonna move on. Okay, um, so the next step what we are going to do is um, we're going to cut out four or cut four pieces of um, scotch tape or something like it. And we're actually going to glue those parts together. So we're going to need those four pieces and then we're going to glue it together such as this. And, and you'll notice that um, we have one, one piece of scotch tape, which is not uh, attached to, to more than one side actually, but we're going to uh, we're then actually going to put it up and build a pyramid. So I'm going to show you quickly what we are trying to achieve here. Um, so basically, afterwards, it should look like this. So once we've got those um, four pieces of scotch tape in place, we're going to actually move it to the third dimension and then glue it all together so it should look like this. But the first step is to get those four pieces of scotch tape and then uh, go ahead and glue it together, um, such, such as you can see on, on the screen right now. So, um, all right, so I'm going to stop the screen share again so you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to go and glue those pieces together. Do we do the eight? Sorry, can you repeat that? Do we do the eight of them or uh, the second one? We, we, um, we do the eight of them. We kind of glue all of them together so that it looks just like you can see in the screen right here. And I have one additional piece of scotch tape. So I'm going to just put that on one of those sides here. And uh, so it should actually look like this. And, and to get back to the question of if, if you do the eight, I, I didn't understand what you meant at first, but I think you're meaning because on the sheet, there was more than one set of four to, to cut out. Um, and so you only need one for now, but if there's more than one of you and you have like more sets of hands, then making all of like as many as there were on the sheet, then that's even better. 
Um, but it was just to, like to use a whole sheet if you're doing it that there was more than four of the, the trapezoids. So you don't have to do more than four. Like if you had eight of them, don't make eight all the way around to make a full circle. What, was that what you meant by that question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, exactly. So it was just like you could build multiple from one uh, piece of paper, but we are actually only going to use four of them for the time being, or of course you can build multiple, um, multiple ones, but we only need four actually. So it should look like this. Yes, and once you've got it that far, then we're actually gonna glue um, this side to the other side over here. And um, then we're gonna get this kind of pyramid shape by doing that. So I'm gonna glue it just like this. Okay. And now I have a pyramid kind of shape. So it should look like this. And once you get your pyramid done, maybe try and hold it up in front of the camera for us to see and for everyone to see that you have yours ready. Oh yeah, that would be great. Yeah, cool. That oh, looks that's looking good, yeah. Great, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That looks great. And now the a little bit tricky part is that it should actually be able to stand on on the smaller um, on the smaller side. Here. So you you might have to readjust it a little bit so you can actually put it on on a table or later on your phone just like this. So it should should be good by itself if you put it on a on a surface like that. So I'm gonna try that a little bit better for mine. Yeah. So now it works pretty okay. All right, so once, uh, once you've got that, we can actually use it and uh, see what we're gonna get with this kind of uh, hologram deflector. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, screen share, just a sec. Okay, once we've got that, um, the idea basically is to, to put it on a smartphone um, just like this. And we will need a special kind of video to be able to see any, any holograms. Um, so we can actually get that on YouTube. So I've copied a link uh, on the slide where you can go and you'll find uh, a video specially made for those kind of uh, hologram reflectors. Um, you can also search for them on YouTube. There are a couple of different ones actually. And if you um, search for um, smartphone, hologram, um, hologram project, then, then you're gonna find some other ones as well. But uh, I actually like the one I, I linked for you down here. So yeah, just, just head over to, to, to YouTube and um, and start the video uh, on your smartphone or on your tablet. And you, you're going to see that's actually four times uh, the same kind of shape and it's, it's going to be mirrored. I'll uh, just grab my, my smartphone or my tablet rather. And going to go to that, uh, to that link too.
yeah and um I actually glued mine with a little bit of, of scotch tape to the to the middle of the tablet um, because I found it that it's uh, actually gliding a little bit too much. But you don't have to do it; it's just uh, a convenience kind of thing. And I'm gonna start the video. But on my uh, iPad, it's uh, the video is unavailable. Okay. Um, I've got it. It's working. Okay, uh, as I said, you can also search on YouTube for other ones. There are quite a few. So um, if you Google for smartphone hologram, uh, you should actually run into a couple of very similar kind of videos. So you can have a look. And actually, I'm, I'm just gonna show you the, what you're gonna see. So it should be four times the same kind of video going on. And there's a little black space in the middle of the screen where you can put your, your hologram reflector. So it should look something like this. So if the, if the link doesn't work for you, it's no big deal. You, you're gonna find other ones on YouTube if you have a uh, look around. Yes, and if you have a look um, at the hologram reflector from the side, and you're actually gonna see uh, something inside the pyramid. And it looks quite cool. <laughs> and, and if it's not showing up that bright, one trick is to make your room darker. So I've just turned the lights off. And I think when I emailed you guys, I said, try and be in a room where you could draw curtains. Because if you're in bright sunlight, this might not work so well. Uh, and obviously make sure your screen is set to a high brightness, like probably maximum brightness. If you're using an iPad, often it'll auto dim depending on the surrounding light level. So you might need to go into the settings and override that. Yeah, but it doesn't need too dark. So uh, I do have a window behind me without any curtains or shutters um, and it still works. So it just needs to be reasonably dark. And I, I must say, I mean, I, I've seen that quite a number of times now, but I still find it impressive because it looks so real you really, at least I really have the impression that it's kind of moving within this uh, this pyramid. And um, yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> and I hope you do too. And and can we get a couple people trying to hold it in front of the camera so we can, we can see yours working? So we're, because uh, that'd be kind of cool to see. It's so cool. It's working. It's working? Cool. It's so cool. <laughs> wow. I get the feeling it's a bunch, a bunch of people who are going to spend the rest of the day just watching different videos of this online. Yeah. Yeah, and, and since it's a, a, a pyramidal shape, you can actually turn the smartphone around or the tablet around and you, you can kind of watch it from from any side um, so it makes the illusion really quite convincing in my opinion how ah, cool yeah i can see it great oh that one's looking really good alex yeah yeah and it looks really big. I, well, I guess that's partly because you have it so close to the camera. But yeah, that, that one's a Yeah. Neat. It's on a phone. It, and mine is weird. It, it doesn't seem to show up well on the camera, but like in person, I'm seeing it well. Um, so trust me, mine's working, but it's good to see that your guys is working. You, you can see Fabian's and you can see uh, each other's. So I tried to in the camera when it was lighter and it didn't really work but when it was really dark it worked for other people to see it mm. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I can't get my own room much darker, but don't, don't worry about mine not working out so well for you guys. It's good that uh, other people's work better than mine seems to work. Yeah, no, we, we won't worry about mine being relatively unphotogenic. Uh, I'm glad you guys are working better for, your, for you. So is it working? Is it working for you? Um, well, like mine's working perfectly fine for me. Just my camera's not yeah. picking up on it at all. I, okay. And I saw Alex too, but for the others, did you manage to get it uh, up and running actually? Or I, any struggles, any questions? I think I saw Clara's and Deanne Rose's working. And a lot of others don't have their cameras on, but not everyone uh, has a camera available um, to join with video as well. Okay. And I, I, I bet a bunch of them are wondering how this works. Yeah, shall we maybe uh, have a little discussion on how this uh, magic works? Okay, so um, I'm gonna go back to the screen share and we maybe can find out together how that actually works. So how does it work? So if we imagine that we have just, uh, to simplify matters, that we just have, um, you know, one point was, which is uh, lighting up. And we, let's have a look at it from the side. Um, and then uh, hopefully you're gonna agree that that light's gonna be emitted from this red dot, okay? I, I think we can all agree that, that the smartphone and this red dot are going to emit light, which is why we are able to, to actually see it in the first place. And it's, well, I mean, it's gonna go uh, to all directions, right? You can see it from, from any side too, so it's not directed. And to simplify matters a little bit further, just let's just have a look at the light that actually hits this per, pyramidal shape. And um, now the question is what's gonna happen once the light hits this transparent film? What do you think is gonna happen? Anybody who wants to, to share his or her thoughts? And feel free either just to jump on the microphone or if uh, you don't feel like your, your voice being heard, use the chat as well if you want to write that instead. Everyone seems kind of quiet today. What, what, what happens to light when it hits a flat reflective surface? Like the, the plastic. So, I mean, think about a, a window maybe to, to facilitate or simplify matters. If you have a window and light, light hits a window, I mean, what's the first thing that's gonna happen, basically? What's light gonna do once it hits a, the window? Any ideas? We'll go across it. Yeah, it will just go through. And this is true here too, you know? Some of the light is just gonna go through and, and nothing's gonna happen to it, right? Okay, so that's one part of the light, but it's not all of the light. To other parts of the light, or the light is gonna actually be split. And what's gonna happen to, to the other part of the light? Do you have any, any thoughts on that? Can we have in the chat uh, someone saying it reflects? Yeah, exactly. So it's gonna, parts of the light are gonna be reflected um, because basically it's, if, if light hits the surface, that's usually what happens. Some light gets, um, gets through, some light is absorbed, and some light is going to be reflected. So we have some light being reflected, as you can see here. And um, now it could be reflected in principle in any direction, but, but actually it doesn't. Um, does anybody of you remember maybe from, uh, from a school lesson or some explanation how the light is gonna be reflected off a surface? And this is generally true on a mirror or 
all kinds of surfaces. Anybody, any ideas on how it's going to be reflected? Like how the angle of reflection relates to the angle of incidence might be some of the, the words you, uh, that have been used in school. Yeah, I'm going to show you. So I actually prepared a little drawing here. And you can see, as, as Michael just said, the angle of inf uh, incidence, which is alpha, and the angle of reflection, which is better. And do you have any ideas or maybe heard it before how they're actually going to relate to each other, those two angles? Anybody? <laughs> maybe not yet, or maybe you're too shy. Yeah, so that, a, that's a, a lot of people are kind of shy today. Yeah, it's fine. Um, they should so, be equal. Yeah, they should be equal. So there's this law of reflection, right? And it's basically stating that those two angles should be equal, okay? So it's bouncing back at exactly the same angle when it's actually hitting, uh, hitting the surface, okay? So that's what's going to happen. And now what's, what's happening is actually quite amazing. Um, basically, the light will just um, propagate, you know, through, through air. And eventually, it's going to hit the eye, which is why we are actually able to, to see it, right? And um, we are accustomed to light moving in straight lines. So we will suppose, the eye will suppose, the mind will suppose that it actually originated um, from a point lying uh, a little bit back. And by... Um, and, and where those two straight lines actually hit, those dotted lines are where we suppose uh, the, the light actually went through. Uh, and by kind of um, back projecting it, um, we'll find the spot where we will actually see, the, uh, see this point because um, we assume that the light moves in straight lines and the light moves such as, at, as it would have um, been emitted from this point within the pyramid. And that's actually all, all the magic, that's the trick. And it's basically reflection, right? Um, so it's the same kind of process that you have in a mirror uh, or, or such a device. Um, but here it's a little bit cooler, right? Because it's, uh, it's a half transparent thing and it really makes um, the figure, the image, the video appear to be within the pyramid. Um, and, and that's how it actually works. So as you can see, it's, it's quite simple but um, at the same time, quite cool. <laughs> and what I like too about this kind of experiment is that the idea for this kind of illusion dates really back to the 19th century and it was known as Papa's Ghost. It has been used for, for theater um, performances where, for example, if you needed a ghost, you would use a similar kind of setup. You can Google it if you're interested in it um, to make a ghost appear on stage and things like that. Um, so the idea is actually quite old, but the way we use it right now, the way you have it on your smartphone is, is obviously a very recent one. So it's an, an old idea, but it, uh, it's, it's really cool how it has been implemented uh, with those um, modern technological devices. So yes, that's how it works. And this is why uh, basically we can see it within the pyramid or it appears to be within the pyramid, um, even though it's actually not, it's on the, on the smartphone. All right, so um, yeah, that's, that's the explanation. I don't really have the time in front of me. Um, so Michael, what do you think? Is, is there still some time left to, um, to explain a little bit how you would make your own images or how should we proceed? Uh, we're, we're pretty close to out of time, but if people are interested in staying like maybe four or five minutes late, I can do a quick overview of how you can make your own images. Um, can we get thumbs up if people are interested in me taking the time to do that? Again, I'm seeing a couple of thumbs up, a couple of people in the dark too with thumbs up, so it's hard to see your thumb in the dark. Uh, but I'll take a couple of minutes to go over that. I'll, I'll make it fairly quick. Um, the bottom line is anytime you take an image and you make it bright with the whole background around it dark, you can, add, well, and you make more of it in this case, then you can make that work. Um, one simple example of that, I'm going to use a virtual background and it doesn't work that well because uh, my processor isn't compatible unless it thinks I have a green screen. So I'm just going to turn on a virtual background and now you see my, my face and my hands floating. Although I've got like part of the flag there that doesn't go away. So that'll float in the background. And then I'm going to uh, open a second video of me and you can use this uh, if you're in Zoom like on a, on a phone. If you're on your computer, it'll be a little bit more tricky just from the geometry of it to work. 
Um, but I've got my second, uh, like my camera is my second phone. And you can see an example of me. Uh, I'm just gonna get my video nice and big in speaker view. Having a hard time putting myself into speaker view, but you can see a small version. No, that doesn't work so well. Um, right, because it's um, green screened out. That, that should work for you getting a floating version of my head, but that's only one, that's not four of them. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is to use a still image. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you a, a PowerPoint because it's one of the easiest programs uh, you can use to do that. Uh, here I've got some links, I'll, I'll give them to you in the chat um, so you can get back to this same one yourself. But I'm gonna skip ahead to one where I've just taken an image of myself and I've only taken a front image. The effect is a little more convincing if I take it from an angle at the side or if I take a couple of images. Um, but if I make that nice and big, uh, view, present, then you should, uh, if you use that, and that's why I'm gonna send you the link to it, then you can actually have me at home. So you can take me with you anywhere you wanna go. Uh, but you can do that with yourself, which is probably more interesting to do as well. And you, you can also do it with a video. Um, so I'm gonna send, uh, send you this link in the chat. Um, just looking at how I get to the chat while I'm screen sharing. Hmm. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can get back into the chat for a second. Okay, sorry that took an unreasonably long amount of time to get into the chat. Okay, so now if you wanna to get to that uh, slide uh, so that you can both see that at home, but if you look at this example video, uh, you'll see this is one that I made with a couple of teachers from my school. I was actually replacing a couple of them uh, in the same lesson. And you can see it's not too hard. All I did here was I took a green screen. Oh, hi Mike. And with the green screen, if you use this with your own projector, you can see two of the teachers of my school doing what was the monologue with me. And to do that, all I did, just similar to the virtual background for Zoom, I put a video of them into a video editor. In this case, I used iMovie because it's a simple one that was available on, on my MacBook. And I green screened them out, took the video, rotated it, and repeated that a couple of times. So you should be able to do this with uh, images or videos of yourselves afterwards. So it'd be really cool if you end up, uh, oh, and I just realized I wasn't sharing the screen to show you that video. Um, gonna go back and share the screen so you can see what I was talking about with that, with that video. Um, okay, now, now you should see the shared screen, right? Okay. So you can see these, uh, these are a couple of teachers and that like really it didn't take very long to do that. Um, took may maybe an hour to put like the whole video uh, together, timing like with the rotated pieces and everything like that. So that's a challenge for any of you who wanna go a little bit further with this, try and make a, a video of yourselves and then share that with me so I can like have a hologram of, of you and it'll feel almost like a real class if we have holograms of everyone uh, together like that. Um, so that was a, a quick overview of how to make your own images or videos like that. Uh, even though it went kind of quick, I think, well, I hope that most of you got the, the basic principle of that. Are there any questions on like how to do that yourself? And it, do, it doesn't seem like there's any questions. I have one more question. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is possible to record the hologram on the plate somehow. Record hologram on what? On the plate, so we can uh, see the in every time, whenever I look at the plate. I oh, mean, the, 
not uh, I'm uh, in the uh, professional hologram they use the laser right and they just uh, reflect the light on a plate and they record the hologram on the plate so somehow we can do some kind of is experiment record the hologram on the plate so we can save it on the plate um that that's a good question. I I don't offhand know of an easy way. Well, like of a way where I personally could do that with the, with the technology I have at home. Um, like certainly it is the next well. experiment could be a laser. <laughs> <laughs> although although I I think the the power of the lasers you need to do that are stronger than what we'd be able to like what we're supposed to use in school. Uh, I'm I'm not sure though. That's that's something worth looking into more. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, and are are there any other questions before we say goodbye? Okay. And I I can't see uh, Fabian on anymore. It, oh, here, here he is. Um, uh, must have had a small connection problem. So, um, so. I think unless uh, unless Fabian has something to add, I think that brings the session to an end. Um, so I want to uh, say thank you again, a, a huge thank you to Fabian for joining us for this one. Uh, I know I had a great time and I heard a lot of you say it was really awesome. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. I'm just gonna wait to see if uh, Fabian is really back so we can all say thank you to him once more before we say well, goodbye. I am, can you actually hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Okay. So my camera kind of stopped working, um, but it was great to have you. It was great for being able to to uh, to do the session with you. And once again, many thanks. Sorry, sorry. Please don't. Um, goodbye again. Uh, thanks for joining in the adventure. Uh, stay safe, stay home, and above all, stay curious. <laughs>